Welcome to Counters. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the future value of an ordinary annuity. In our previous lesson, we looked at the future value of a lump sum or of the future value of a single amount. So if you'd like to check that one out and it would be a good place to start, you can click at the link at the top right of the screen or you'll find the link in the description below. But what is the future value of an ordinary annuity? Well, this is the calculation of the value in the future of a series of payments made at the end of specific periods. At a specific interest rate, you will be able to find out what this series of payments will amount to at a specific future date. So these are payments made at the end of each period. And you want to know what it will amount to in the at a specific future date when you are given a specific interest rate. So what do we mean by ordinary annuity? Well, when payments are made at the end of each period, the annuity is known as ordinary annuity. So that is what it basically means. Ordinary annuity, payments made at the end of each period. We also looked at another lesson where payments are made at the beginning of the period and that is known as annuity due. So if you'd like to check that one out, you can click at the link at the top right of the screen or you'll also find the link in the description below. So let's get into it. Future value of an ordinary annuity, what is the formula? Well, the formula is FVN equals PMT 1 plus I to the power N minus 1 divided by I. So what do these letters stand for? Well, FVN is the future value of an annuity at the end of a specific period. And that is why we added the N over there. If it was FV, it's just the future value of a lump sum like we did in our previous example. But with us adding the end, that means the future value of an annuity at the end of a specific period. And then PMT, what does PMT stand for? PMT is the annuity payment made at the end of each period. So these are the payments which are made at specific periods. That is what the PMT stands for. And then 1 plus I, what is the I there? Well, I is the interest rate. And your formula might use the, the letter R. Uh, which is also fine. It's the exact same thing. I or R is the interest rate you are given. And then to the power of N, what is the N there? N is the number of compounding periods. Now, N is not necessarily the number of years. It's the number of compounding periods depending on how many times it's compounded per year. I'm going to look at a few examples just now, so do not worry about that. And then you minus 1 and then you divide it by I, which is the interest rate as we just said. So when you're punching it into your calculator, you begin with your numerator over here. You say you take 1 plus I, which is the interest rate. And remember the interest rate, you write it down as a decimal. So if it's 10%, you write 0 0.1. If you want to get 0 0.1, you can just take 10 divided by 100. You take 0 0.1. So 1 plus 0 0.1 if the interest rate is 10%. And then you raise that answer in brackets. The, to the power n which is the compounding periods and then once you get that answer you minus one once you get that answer you divide it by the interest rate 0 0.1 if it's 10 percent and then once you get that answer in these big brackets you multiply it finally by the payments made at the end of each specific period and that is how you deal with this one when you're punching it into your calculator. But here's something important to note, like I mentioned about the compounding periods. And we mentioned this one here when we looked at our previous example of on the future value of a lump sum. If there is more than one compounding per year, you divide the interest rate by the number of compoundings per year to get I or to get the interest rate. Okay. If there is more than one compounding per year, you divide the interest rate by the number of compoundings per year to get I. Now, if they tell you that it's compounded annually, you don't have to do anything. You put the interest rate as it is. So let's continue that example of 10%. If they tell you the interest rate is 10%, your I will be 0 0.10, obviously. So if it's compounded annually, your I will remain 0 0.10. But if it's compounded more than once, you will have to divide your interest rate by the number of compoundings per year. So let me give you an example. What if they tell you it's compounded quarterly? Now, quarterly, it's four times per year. That's what it means if it's compounded quarterly. So you will take the interest rate. So if you're given interest rate of 10%, you will take 10% or 0 0.1 divide by four because it's four compoundings per year if they tell you it's quarterly. So that is how the number of compoundings affect your interest rate. Let's continue. And you multiply the number of years by the number of compoundings per year to get N. 
right so now this is also going to affect n or the compounding period if it's compounded more than once per year you will multiply the number of years by the number of compoundings per year to get n so let me give you an example again let's say you are calculating for the future value of an ordinary annuity for five years so it's five years but they tell you it's compounded quarterly so like i said quarterly it's four compoundings per year because quarterly is every three months so every three months equals four times a year so you will take five years times four because it's quarterly it's four compoundings per year so five times four will give you n is 20 so your n is going to be 20 if it's compounded quarterly and it's for five years and what is your interest rate going to be well if like i said if you are given 10 percent, it's going to be 0 0.10 or 10 percent divide by four to get your i that you will plug into your formula that is what compounding does so in simple terms your number of compounding if it's compounded more than once it will affect your interest rate and your n if it's compounded only annually you will put your interest rate as it is and you'll put your n as the number of years that is as simple as it is so let's look at these examples for you to understand much better here we are told that john deposits three thousand rand into a savings account at the end of each year for a period of 10 years this investment earns five percent interest compounded annually so if it's compounded annually it's once per year so it won't have, it will put our interest rate as it is and the number of years at, as it is calculate how much john will receive in 10 years time so john deposits 3000 rand into a savings account at the end of each year that means it's an ordinary annuity it's at the end and it's at the end of each year for a period of 10 years so let's take out our formula again there is our formula so what is our pmt going to be well our pmt or the payment is going to be 3000 rand right that's the payment that i made at the end of each year or at the end of each period so it's three thousand rand and then one plus i what is our interest rate it's five percent it's compounded annually so we don't have to do anything so it's just going to put five percent or 0 0.05 remember we put it in decimal so to get 0 0.05 you just take five divided by 100 gives you 0 0.05 as your i so you'll add one plus 0 0.05 you get your answer and then you raise it to the power n what is n well it's 10 years we didn't have to do anything because it's compounded once or compounded annually and then so once you get what's inside the brackets raise it to the power n which is 10 years and then once you get that answer you minus one once you get that answer you divide it by 0 0.05 or the five percent and then once you get the answer in this bracket you multiply it finally by 3000 rand to get your answer so let's see how our formula looks 3000 times 1 plus 0 0.05 raise it to the power 10 and then we minus that answer by 1 and then we divide by the interest rate which is 0 0.05 and then we multiply by the 3000 rand and what is our future value of an ordinary annuity well the future value of an ordinary annuity is 37,733 rand 68 cents that is how you calculate the future value of an ordinary annuity when it's compounded annually